Pressure plate turning requires the following items. A proper size friction plate to perform the work necessary, a scribe, a pressure pad, pressure sensitive adhesive paper or double sided tape, and stock to turn. First, use the scribe to draw out a circle. Using layout fluid will enable you to see the line drawn by the scribe much easier. Then cut out the circle near the line on a metal cutting bandsaw. Touch up the cuts you just made on the disc sander to remove rough edges created by the bandsaw blade. For safer handling, take a file and deburr the edges of the part. Place a pressure plate that is roughly the same size as the material you're working with and tighten it in the chuck. If the stock you are turning is very thin, you should use a pressure plate with a larger diameter than the desired diameter of the stock. Ensure a left to right cutting tool centered and face the pressure plate. This ensures that the stock will remain true and not nutate as it spins. Wipe the plate clean with the rag and alcohol to remove the cutting fluid. Then apply PSA paper to the pressure plate. The PSA paper provides lots of little gripping teeth that will hold on to the workpiece as it rotates. If the plate and stock is very large, double sided tape should be used. Cut off the excess paper and use a deburring tool to remove what is left. Place the chuck in neutral and rotate it by hand to safely clean the edge of the plate. Place a live center in the tailstock and then prepare the pressure pad for the drive end. Place a few 1 inch strips of double sided tape evenly around the pad. You surprisingly don't need very much tape to effectively hold the workpiece. Place your stock between the chuck and place the pressure pad on the drive end. The pressure pad must have a countersink with the same angle as the live center. This allows more surface area to hold the pad effectively in place. Apply a significant amount of pressure to the workpiece and lock the tailstock quill in place. Next, use the cutting tool as a reference and center the workpiece on the lathe. When you find the farthest point around the perimeter of the stock, move the stock about halfway to the cutting tool. Continue to repeat this process until the line runs true with the cutting tool. Now slowly move the cutting tool toward the x-axis of your workpiece until you see a chip fly. Then zero the x-axis. Move the carriage about 10 thousandths and begin removing material. If you try to take off too much material in one pass, a high spot on the workpiece will grab the cutting tool and stop the workpiece while the pressure plate and chuck continue to spin. This burns up the PSA paper and will require you to replace the paper before restarting. As the cutting tool gets closer to removing material around the entire perimeter, more material can be removed in each subsequent pass. Occasionally turn the tailstock handwheel and retighten the tailstock wheel to ensure your workpiece is secure. After material is removed around the entire perimeter, measure the diameter and input this into the DRO. Continue turning to the desired dimension and then deburr the edges before removing the part. Be careful not to hit the chuck when filing the headstock side of your workpiece. Get a final measurement and then remove the pressure pad and the workpiece. Use acetone to help remove the double sided tape. If your workpiece will have a hole drilled through the center, using a pressure pad is unnecessary. It is easiest to center the workpiece by drilling and countersinking a hole with the same angle as the live center. As you can see in the video, it is sometimes necessary to cut into the pressure plate to turn the entire width of the workpiece. You can also use pressure plate turning to face apart and to cut o-ring grooves. Grooving requires special cutting tools but will provide a better surface finish than milling the groove. Here are some important things to remember. Use an appropriately sized plate. Thin stock needs more support and a pressure plate that is larger than the stock is necessary. Make sure the pressure plate is indicated flat. Facing it before applying PSA paper or double sided tape is the best way to do this. Check for tooling interference. 
Get the carriage as close to the workpiece as you can so the tailstock quill is not overextended, but ensure the chuck will not strike the carriage or the tooling. Never try to pressure plate turn without PSA paper or double-sided tape. Do not take excessive material on each pass. Heavy cuts will stop the rotation of the workpiece or create an unnecessarily dangerous situation.